My name is Professor Mrs. Josephine Wolabi. Sometime last year, I had to go through a surgery. And that was because there were some symptoms, very unpalatable symptoms. It started with palpitation, loss of weight, I body temperature, frequent stooling. Then a diagnosis of hypothyroidism was made. I was placed on Capimazo and some other drugs, which controlled the thyroid level. But eventually, some other things happened. My eyes became swollen and there was a stare. In fact, the eyes was the main problem. Despite being on Kabimazo, despite the fact that the thyroid level was controlled, something still happened to the eyes. There was a stare and the eyelids were massively swollen. So the endocrinologist thought I should see a general surgeon. I was referred to a general surgeon and the general surgeon following examination concluded that I had to do a total thyroidectomy. Initially, I had thought a subtotal would be better. I tried to convince him for a subtotal, not total thyroidectomy, but he insisted because of those other symptoms, especially the eyes. So the surgery was built for 25th of September, 2020, as a total thyroidectomy. I went in for the surgery. Now, prior to the surgery, I didn't have any problems. In fact, a laryngoscopy was done before the surgery. So many other tests, all those routine investigations were done before the surgery, and they were all normal. In fact, the laryngoscopy told me that the vocal cords were mobile, everything was normal. I didn't have any breathing problem. I didn't have any talking problem before the surgery. I, I teach regularly, instruct my students. So it's not as if there was a problem, you know, before the surgery. However, after the surgery, unfortunately, I was told I could not sustain spontaneous breathing. I had to be intubated. The surgery was on a Friday. So I was intubated on Friday and I was assured that by Monday, I will be extubated. That that will give time for the vocal cords to maybe recover. So on Monday, I was transferred to ICU. This surgery was done in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Benin City. So I was transferred to ICU after surgery. I was there for that Friday to Monday. On Monday, one of the young doctors came. He attempted extubation right there in ICU. The experience was horrible. I can't forget. It took the intervention of God. I was choking, gasping. Oxygen saturation was running down. God brought a doctor. His name, I can't forget that doctor, Dr. Useni. He just walked in. He wasn't even supposed to be there. Ah, this God loves me. The doctor just walked in. Ah, what's happening? Quickly, he, he inserted the endotracheal tube back. That was what brought me back. It was horrible. But God intervened. And so, they decided that, well, let's leave this tube to another one week. That will give time. They were buying, buying time. Maybe that will give time for the vocal cords to recover. All this while, nothing else was done. So I was reintubated and had to remain in ICU. Like my husband will always say, <clears throat> I'm very reckless. Some patients can sleep with endotracheal tube, but not me. Not me. I was restless, moving. This, I'm very sure that must have traumatized the trachea. So I was on that tube for, over, for another one week. So that makes it over one week where I was intubated. So it was decided on Friday I was going to be extubated. The senior consultant there, the anesthet anesthetic said the extubation must be done in the theatre. This time, not in ICU. So I was taken to the theatre for the extubation. That's the second time now. The extubated. Do you know I was actually breathing well? I was lying straight on the couch. The 
even asked my husband to go and buy something. I don't know. So I was breathing where they were all watching me. The surgeon, the ENT people, the anesthetics, they were all there. I was lying with my head face up. So the anesthetist now told me, lie on your side. As I turned to my side, wow, I couldn't breathe. All of them, they were all shouting, stride door, stride, that is, all the doctors, they were shouting, stride door, <gasps> stride door. I was now me, I was now calling the ENC. Come, 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 come. I was doing like this. I was telling the ENT, track your stomach, me. I was calling him. Come and put it. Track your stomach. Track your stomach. Go, 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 go. Track your stomach. I was the one that called. I called the ENT. Go to come and put it. And then I passed out. I passed out. By the time I woke up, I was in ICU with a track your stomach on my neck. It was a single lumen and tracheostomy size 6. Funny enough, that day I made, I called my husband. I was able to talk. I would block it. I blocked it and I was talking. The following day, I still spoke to my brothers. They would tell me block it and talk. But I noticed subsequently, even when I blocked it, nothing, nothing was coming out. Nothing. The size 6 was changed to a double lumen, size 7 and I was discharged home. So I continued with routine checkup. They would always ask me to come. I was going every month. And all the ENT people kept on doing, very sad, was just laryngoscopy and checking for vocal cords. That was all. Nobody checked beyond the vocal cord. They gave me monthly appointments. I would go, they would do a laryngoscopy, they would check the vocal cords, they would tell me, the very first time I went, a month after, that was in November, the senior registrar that checked it. Sir, sorry, I forgot something. Before I was discharged, I did a laryngoscopy. Before I was discharged, I remember that laryngoscopy because I wept in that place. When they checked, there was no movement. Completely paralyzed. Both cords not moving. Both vocal cords not moving. There was a screen. They were showing me. The ENT person was saying, see, it's not mobile, not moving. That's why you can't, that's why you can't breathe. So I was discharged home. So after a month, when I came back, you know, it was the same doctor who did the laryngoscope. I won't forget. The doctor jumped. My husband was there. He jumped. He said, wow, the cords are moving. That's one month after. He jumped. He said, the cords are moving. By the time the consultant came to check, <laughs> the consultant said, eh, it's only the, the right that is moving. The left cord is not moving well. So there's inflammation, there's infection. And I wrote antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, that we should give time for the left to recover. So that's what we kept on doing. I went back in December, another month. I was going monthly. It was just laryngoscopy they were doing. They would check the vocal cords. It was the same thing. They would say, the left is not moving well. And, and the right is moving. And there's inflammation. And there's infection. Come back in a month's time. He got to a stage, we got so angry. <sighs> what, are, what is this? Every time, why, when will there not be inflammation? When? Or where will there not be infection? There's a foreign body there. He's expected. There will always be inflammation. But that was always... The excuse the doctor would tell us. He would say, inflammation, inflection. Then he now called me one day and told me. He said from the textbook, uh, it takes six months maximum for vocal cords to recover. Min sorry, minimum. Like it takes a minimum of six months for the vocal cords to recover. So I now said, all right, let's wait six months from the, for the vocal cords to recover. So I removed my mind and decided to wait six months. It became six months around March. We went back. Thank God for the intervention of a senior professor in that department. Because all the while, the laryngoscopy they were using now developed a fault. The, the, the video, the screen. the screen developed a fault. So what happened is that no other person can view 
view what view the laryngoscope except the doctor who is doing it and that was a limitation so it's only it's very subjective because the doctor will check and it's what he says so that doctor directed us to another place that had a screen that could be viewed that was in march so in march my surgeon was there that's the general surgeon who did the thyroidectomy was there other ENT doctors were all there so the laryngoscopy was repeated and it was clear that day that both cords had fully recovered so at that point the consultant was told to go and decannulate that was in march so go and decannulate the patient the cords have recovered so i was taken to the ENT clinic they covered up the they covered the the tracheostomy covered it with gauze with plaster initially i was struggling but i struggled to bear it they, they were using a pulse oximeter. They actually covered it and I struggled to tolerate it for almost for like four hours. It was covered and I was, it wasn't easy. It was difficult, but I, 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 I bought, we even went home with, with the, we went home with it. Mm. Yes. We even went home with the plaster yeah, covered, covered, completely yeah, covered. covered. And I was struggling to, to breathe like that, still managing. But it was not easy. So after a while, we removed it. They asked us to come back in April. And we went back in April. In April, I went alone. When they attempted to cover it again, I could not even tolerate it for a minute. I could not. So at that point, the doctor asked me to go and do a CT. He still had not said anything about bronchoscopy. For the entire seven months. It was now seven months. I don't know why. It never occurred to it. To the consultants to ask for a bronchoscopy, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why he was so unfortunate to me to be to have to have fallen into that consultant's hand. Somebody that is inexperienced. All he thought about was laryngoscopy, and it was even at the last minute he thought of a CT scan. So in April, the seventh month, he asked me to go and do a CT scan and digital X-ray. It was not even his idea. It was from my husband's friend. So I did a CT scan. And the scan talked about pressure built up. He said there was, uh, that's the radiologist report anyway. But the films, all the films, the CD actually showed, showed granulation tissue. At that point, what they didn't know was whether it was complete or not. But the scan showed, the CT scan showed that there were granulation tissue. So UBTH, the doctor wrote a referral letter. They said there's a hospital in Kaduna State, National Air Care Center, Kaduna. That Kaduna has a laser beam, laser surgery, that they can do laser surgery, that they can use laser to clear the granulation tissue. That the, my best bet is to go to Kaduna. So I was given a referral letter I, I, and we went to Kaduna State where we met the Dr. Manasara, a consultant there. So I was built for surgery. All the routine investigations were done and I was prepared for surgery in uh, Kaduna State. So by the time I got to Kaduna, by the time I got to Kaduna, went in for the surgery, I was shocked. When I recovered from the GA, I was shocked. When I was told nothing was done, I was, uh, I was shocked. The doctor said that the bronchoscopy revealed complete closure. Complete. Mm, and meanwhile, he had planned to dilate. His plan was to do dilatation. So not even the laser. He didn't prepare to use laser. Lisa. And if he was going to use laser, he would have needed to change the plastic track your stomach to a metal one for him to do laser. So, so laser. for that reason, and then secondly, um, he also required a stent. His plan was he would open the place with laser and put it then to insert you. a stent. Okay. And the uh, the kind of stent he had in mind was a tissue. Tissue. So there but were... But along the line, a senior colleague of us who also came here for uh, treatment advised us that it might be better for us to just come here, come to India for the treatment. So all the while, while we were consulting with this hospital, it was an, with an ENT person who made the initial assessment and the worst case scenario was painted, uh, which was what the referring doctor wrote, that there was going to be need for resection and anastomosis. 
that was to be the worst case scenario anyway. So, and it was based on that, that the initial assessment was made and we came. So we came to India with the mind that an ENT person was going to uh, handle the case. Yes. So, but to my, to my surprise, <laughs> I was pleasantly, you know, surprised to find out that interventional pulmonologists can even handle this sort of, you know, yes. uh, case. What has really impressed me the most is the the way the interventional pulmonologist handled the, the, the case. Uh, for that kind of situation, it requires somebody who is level-headed, who is um, cool, who can take his time because it's a difficult situation to manipulate. So, and from the moment we got here, it was... From day one. It, day one, it just started. It started. You know, just took over. And the experience has been a very wonderful, wonderful one. one. Within the first one week, of our arrival here, the entirely closed place had been opened, opened up. up and we could now see the, the tracheostomy down. from, from up, up down, down, from the vocal cord down. And you know, and that is how he kept on working on it, doing serial bronchoscopy. And the result has been very fantastic. We are very grateful to him, grateful to God. Grateful to God yes. Almighty. And uh, we appreciate what he has done, and uh, we also appreciate the commitment of the entire See. clinical staff. It has been it has been a very wonderful uh, experience. Yes. So that as that is a summary of uh, the whole event. We 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 want to. I want to personally appreciate the doctor. I've always told him thank you after every procedure. And I want Dr. to still say that I thank you very much. God used you. He, he took absolute control. And I want you to know we are grateful. We are very grateful. Very grateful. To Dr. Arikisha. We are grateful. Your job well done. Your job well done. And we are both grateful to God Almighty. The one who is in charge of every situation. Oh, yes. God Almighty took absolute control. And we return all glory to him. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much.